Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back on the air in five, four, three, two. We now return to WBFR Playhouse of the Air's presentation of Vintage Hitchcock, our offering for tonight. I'm so glad to see that so many of you are still with us. Now, I, oh, I see we won't be ready for another 60 seconds. Yes. Uh, fortunately, we have a spot here that will fit nicely. parking directly in front of the 12 guest rooms. Each room features a private tiled bath with an abundance of hot water. With hospitality that even Mother would say is second to none, the Bates Motel is truly an experience you will treasure for the rest of your days. It's the Bates Motel, 12 rooms, 12 showers, you can wash your tears away. There are other kinds of darkness in London besides the fog and the night. And the heart of this part of the city is the darkest of all. The darkness found in the Bijou Cinema. The flickering shop lights illuminate the hustle and bustle of the city and sometimes they go out. Something's in the air tonight, however, and the people aren't so much afraid of the dark, but are having a laugh instead. Folks joke on the underground, and the mood becomes light. Midlight Electric Light and Power Company! A light almost the whole city's in the dark, madam! Oh, we're working on it now, sir, I assure you! Midlight Electric Light and Power Company! Lights out! Power down! The turbine stopped! What's that? Sand! Sabotage! What's at the back of it? Who did it? Carl Anton Verloc is on his way home from an errand of sorts. I should perhaps mention that home is a modest flat above a cinema he runs with his wife, an American named Winnie. And as to the errand, well, Let's just say that when he returns home, the first thing he will do is wash the sand from his hands. And now... Sabotage! We're in front of the Verloc's Bijou Cinema now, at the box office, where a crowd of patrons demand their money back. Mrs. Verloc, you broke a contract, therefore you broke the law. But the blackout's everywhere. Just look up and down the street. I pay my money to look at the pictures. Well, if I want to sit in the dark, I can do it at home. Yeah, free of charge. Or I can stay at home and listen to the radio. Oh, who who would want to do anymore? that? Well, I think it's a blinking shame robbing the good people like that. Ted, what are you doing here? 
Just thought I'd lend a hand in your hour of need, Mrs. V. That won't be necessary, Ted. Uh, you can go back to your greengrocer's stand. I have things under control. Very well. But if you need me, all you have to do is whistle. Oh, that's awfully kind of you, Ted. I'll have to remember that. We've got to have our money back. Well, it's an act of providence, like an earthquake or a thunderbolt. Or a baby. <laughs> Ted, would you kindly not interfere? We've got to have our money back. Oh, no. Step aside and let a girl get to her work, will you? I'm sorry, I'm so late, Mrs. V. Oh, Renee, are you a sight for sore eyes? Or nearly blind ones? I had a hell of a time trying to eat my egg on toast in the dark after it's on my ear now. Well, the patients want their money back, Renee, but we can't afford it. I do wish Mr. Verloc would come. Rotten place. Can't even see the pictures. Listen to them, Renee. They're getting nasty. Nasty? Well, you leave them to me, Mrs. V. Thank you. Now, would you hand me that flashlight? I'm going to go see if Mr. Verloc has returned. Uh, don't be long. Oh, I won't. With the flashlight leading her on, Winnie makes her way through the dark cinema into the modest living quarters she shares with her husband and her younger brother, Stevie. When she reaches her bedroom, she finds that someone has been sleeping in her bed, and he's still there. Have no fear, it's only her husband. Carl, uh, when did you get home? I haven't been out. Well, you weren't in 20 minutes ago when I called for I you. I was asleep. Why, why are you shining the torch on me? Can't you switch the light on or something? I can't. It failed. Uh, what? Fuse gone down? No, it's everywhere. In the streets and the trains and the audience downstairs wants their money back. They're making a terrible row about it. Well, give it back. What? We can't possibly afford to do that. Yes, we can. You must be crazy, Carl. It'll clear us right out. You're always saying we can't cover expenses. It's all right. It doesn't pay to antagonize the public. I've got some money coming in. Go ahead. Well, it's your decision, but if you're going to be generous, do it properly and come down to the box office with me no, and no, make no. an official no, announcement. No, no. It's not worth all that trouble, Winnie. They're used to you. You go make this speech. Well, all right, but I still think you're crazy. As we return to the box office, Winnie finds Ted commanding the crowd's attention. It is an act of God, I tell you. And what do you call an act of God? Well, your face, for one. <laughs> and you won't get your money back on that. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, Ted? Oh, just lending a hand in your hour of need, Mrs. V. I thought I asked you not to interfere. Well, I have been delivering a little counterattack. Look. I have them on the run. Well, they can come right back. Uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to get your money back. Hey, don't, oh, don't, 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 oh, don't give it now, Mrs. Verloc. I'll stand by you. I'd prefer you to go stand by your apple stall, Ted. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been having a word with Mr. Verloc, and since you're all regular patrons and good friends, you're going to get your money back. Uh, uh, there'll be no money back, I tell you. Go on, get off. Pay no attention to him, please. I tell you, you're crazy. I had it all fixed. Did you mind your own business? Of all the obstinate people... If you don't go away, I'll call the police. No, we want to get the money back or what? Uh, Renee, stop refunding the patrons their money. Let there be light. And there was. Thank you for your trouble, Ted. I'm sure you meant well. Not at all. I like trouble, Mrs. B. Business back to usual, Mrs. Jones, the Verloc's cook, stops by to see Winnie on her way out. The vegetables are all ready for dishing up, Mrs. Verloc. I've got to hurry home now because my husband's having trouble with his kidneys again, and I can't leave him for long. Your younger brother's looking after them. The, the kidneys? No, the vegetables. Oh, <laughs> good night, Mrs. Jones. Same to you, Mrs. Verloc. In the kitchen, Winnie's younger brother Stevie helps prepare the dinner as best he can. Alas, he is better at making a mess than a meal. Oh, now I've done it again. Oh, Stevie, have you done all this by yourself? I tried. Oh, come on, don't be so modest. Sorry about the plate. Oh, that's all right. Now take off my apron and wash your hands for dinner. Winnie and Stevie bring the rest of the dinner to the table where Mr. Verloc is waiting. Well, Carl, we didn't have to pay the audience back their money after all. 
Oi. Always that woman, Mrs. Jones, she manages to make the cabbage brown. Ugh. I'm always telling her you like things green. I'll make you a salad. Oh, Stevie, would you run next door to Ted's and get a nice green head of lettuce? Long around. I like long best. Whichever's freshest. And tell Ted to charge it to our account. We very nearly wouldn't have been able to afford lettuce if we'd have paid the audience back. I, I just don't see why you wanted to pay them back at all. Anything for quiet. I don't like attention being drawn to us in such a way. Ted, what are you doing here? Uh, good evening. Uh, forgive me for butting into your private affairs, but Stevie didn't appear to know whether you wanted long, round, oblong, or square letters. So I brought a selection. Oh, good evening, Mr. Verlock. So you came home just in time to see the trouble, eh? Uh, me? I've been in since the afternoon. But I could have sworn I saw you come in just about an hour ago. Well, you are wrong. I, I didn't know anything about it until Winnie woke me up. Did I, Winnie? Oh, no, I, Mr. M Verloc was taking a nap when I found him. Sorry. My mistake, I suppose. Well, good night, all. Good night, Ted. As the Verlocks begin their dinner, we follow Ted back through the cinema and to the greengrocer, where he has a word with his boss. Mind if I pop off early tonight, Gov? Okay, Ted. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, sir. Ted takes the underground to Scotland Yard and goes to see Inspector Talbot, his real boss. You see, Ted is working undercover to keep an eye on Mr. Verloc. He fills Talbot in on the latest activities. I'm sure I saw Verloc return after the lights had gone out. But later when I challenged him, he said he hadn't been out at all and his wife confirmed the whole story, sir. Well, naturally. Well, she would if she's in it. Same as being robbed in a crowd. One man treads on your toe, and while you're arguing with him, his pal picks your pocket. I don't think she or her little brother are mixed up in this thing. Uh, can you prove that? Not yet. But it's the powers up the ladder that are our concern, aren't they? If Verloc's a puppet, who's pulling on his strings? They're the people that you and I will likely never catch. It's the men they employ that are all work to get. You keep following Verloc and don't be so quick as to rule out his wife or brother yet either. Detective Hollingshead is at your disposal too. Let him shadow one and you the other. Of course, sir. Very good. The next morning, Ted is at the greengrocer when Mr. Verloc emerges from the cinema. Well, good morning, Mr. Verloc. Where are you off to this fine morning? I'm off to pick up the new film for the weekend. Well, pick us up a good one then, you know, with plenty of intrigue, suspense, and murders. This love stuff has got me all sick. The women like it, though. I suppose. Good day to you, Ted. Ted watches as Mr. Verloc crosses the street. Hollingshead, another Scotland Yard detective, is standing across the way. Ted gives him the signal to follow Mr. Verloc, who boards the bus without realizing he's been tailed. Come on, Stevie, we haven't all day. Oh, why, if it isn't Stevie and Mrs. Verloc. Oh, hi, Ted. How's your greengrocer? Oh, ripping and roaring. Always a market for greens and things and cabbages oh. and peas. <laughs> oh, did you hear what he said, sister? Yes. Ted's a clever one, all right. Your fruits are lunch today, Ted. Oh, is that all? Well, how about a nice juicy steak with me? What about it? Well, I'm all for it. Good. Well, where shall we go? Well, I'd like to go to Simpsons. My friend's uncle took him there once. Mind your manners, Stevie. Oh, don't be too hard, Mrs. V. Let's make it Simpsons. I won't take no for an answer. Very well, Ted. Oh, boy, Simpsons! Simpsons it is. Off we go. As Ted starts for Simpsons with Winnie and Stevie, Mr. Verloc's bus has reached the zoo. There, Mr. Verloc meets with Vladimir, his boss. Hollingshead follows as close as he dares. Good morning, Vladimir. Hello, Verloc. I, uh, I, I hope you were... Satisfied with my work last night? It was just the sort of thing to make people sit up, huh? I, uh, <clears throat> I, I think you'll agree I've earned my money. I just hope you didn't mind my asking for it in pound notes. Obviously, you have not seen today's newspapers, Verloc. Or you wouldn't be so proud of yourself. 
Look at this headline. London laughs at blackout. When one sets out to put the fear of the death into the people, it's not helpful to make them laugh. We're not comedians. It, it's not my fault that they are such fools. Londoners are not fools. They laughed because they realized what happened last night was laughable. They did right to laugh. This time. What, what do you mean? You will be paid your money when you've earned but, it. I, I, I don't follow. My dear Verloc, I once read the sign in Piccadilly Circus calling it the center of the world. I think you'd better pay a visit there tomorrow and leave a small parcel in the cloakroom at the underground station. What sort of parcel? A parcel of fireworks. Fireworks? No. I'm not interested in being connected with anything that means loss of life. You, 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 you have to get somebody else to do it. I won't. I won't touch it. Very well then, Verloc. If you think you're so well off... You know I'm not. All right then. And if you're so fussy about doing it yourself, surely you can find someone else to do it for you. Perhaps. There is an address on this slip of paper. Go and see this man. He's a very nice old gentleman, and he makes lovely fireworks. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll try and see him. And don't forget tomorrow. A busy day in Piccadilly Circus. Lots of people enjoying themselves, feeling safe and secure. Y uh, you, you, you want me to come and report? Thanks, no. If you're successful, it won't be necessary. Tomorrow, they must not laugh. Ted, Winnie, and Stevie arriving at Simpson's Restaurant, one of the finest in all of London. Have you ever been here at Simpson's before, Ted? No, never. Well, all this is very expensive, isn't it? Yes, it looks like it, doesn't it? Well, I've got a pound note for you if you want it. It's all right. Now, Stevie, setting aside the steak for a moment, we have here before us oysters, caviar, smoked salmon, fried, grilled, or boiled sole, roast saddle of mutton, Kentish chicken pudding, boiled I silver side. I think Stevie would like a nice poached egg on toast. Would? A and I'll have a mixed salad. What? A poached egg here at Simpson's? Ooh, why, that's enough to make the roast beef turn in its gravy. Waiter! May I take your order, sir? Sirloin for three, please. Yes! Very good, sir. Right away. When did you come over from America, Mrs. Verloc? Oh, about a year ago. Business wasn't too good over there. Oh, that's funny. Uh, people used to go to the States because business wasn't too good over here. Well, how are things now? Not too good? Not terribly. I hadn't noticed you turning people away. It's hard to make a one-man business pay these days unless you run a sideline. Has Mr. Verloc a sideline? No, but we're quite satisfied with things the way they are. Just one happy little family? Just one happy little family. Mr. Verloc's very kind to Stevie. And that means a lot to Stevie's sister. It means everything. Yeah. <laughs> ah, now here we are. Uh, no facts for you as usual, sir. Well, you haven't been in for a long time, but... I don't forget. <laughs> Do I look as though I don't like that? <laughs> What's the big idea? What idea? Oh, well, you said you've never been here before, but the waiter obviously knew you. Uh, come to think of it, there's a mystery about most people. What goes on in that cinema of yours after hours? Deeds of darkness. Does your husband go on mysterious journeys? Oh, he does. Wearing false whiskers. Uh-huh. That means there's another woman in his life. <laughs> <laughs> If only you knew him. What's the joke? Well, he's the quietest, most harmless person you've ever met. I'm finished. What's for dessert? Oh, Stevie. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mr. Verloc visits the address he was given by Vladimir, which just so happens to be that of a bird shop. Behind the counter stands the proprietor. A kindly old gentleman who goes by the name of the Professor. Who you remember? The nice old man who makes, shall we say, fireworks? 
At the moment, he's getting rather an earful from a very dissatisfied customer. But I can't understand, madam. This is one of my best songbirds. It sang all day before you purchased it. Uh, perhaps in a few days it will settle down. Nothing will make it settle down. Oh, I've tried everything. Whistling to it, clapping my hands, frying bacon. No use. It just sits there and makes me look silly. That's not the bird's fault, I assure you, madam. <gasps> Isn't it? Yeah, perhaps it's resting. Have you thought of that, madam? Oh, resting my eye! Oh, I'll have my two and nine, please, and there's your bird back. Oh, I want a canary for company. Very well, madam. Here you are. Do come and call on us again. We shall see about that, sir. Good day. And... How may I help you, sir? <clears throat> Are you the professor? Ah, yes. You want something from my other department, don't you? Yes, of course. This way. The professor leads Mr. Verloc into the back room. Let's see what I might have for you in my cupboard. Everything there looks pretty harmless. You are right, my friend. But if I were to mix, say, a little tomato sauce with some strawberry jam, <laughs> then, well, I shouldn't want to be any place near. Very clever. Thank you. Uh, now I gather from our mutual friends that tomorrow is the day and the hour three. Yeah, but, but how do I start the mechanism? You leave that to me. By the time you receive it, everything will have been set in motion. Well, you seem a little nervous. Don't be afraid. Say to yourself, there is one man who envies you. Envies me? I've been a fighter always until now. But alas, I'm no longer fronted on the front line. I must keep the fighters supplied. But I would rather be in your shoes. I will deliver the package to you tonight. Very well. Good day to you. And to you, comrade. Following lunch with Winnie and Stevie, Ted returns to Scotland Yard to update Talbot on his progress. Well, what luck with Mrs. Verloc? She knows nothing, sir, nothing at all. Well, what makes you think so? She has a straight answer to everything, sir. But what about Mr. Verloc? I'm not certain, but if he is mixed up in all this, he's certainly not giving himself away. Hollingshead has been following him today. Uh, Verloc went to the zoo, evidently by appointment, and met a foreign individual. He then proceeded to a bird shop in Islington. Sir, a bird shop in Islington? Uh, doesn't mean much to me either. But Verloc had a lengthy discussion with the proprietor, so we'll keep on this lead. Very good, sir. And uh, where's Verloc now? He's returned to the cinema. You can meet Hollingshead there. So Ted took you to Simpsons? I, I mean, uh, a greengrocer can hardly afford to lunch at Simpsons. Can he? Well, of course, I realized he wasn't a greengrocer at all. He's really quite well off. He's there to learn the business. It's one of a big chain, that shop. He said he's the son of the man who owns them. How would you like a job selling fruit, Stevie? Well, I wouldn't mind. Wouldn't it be great to have steak whenever you like it? I'd have it three times a day. You'd soon get sick of it. Bet I wouldn't. I don't see how you could get sick of things to eat. Except poached eggs. <laughs> What's the matter with poached eggs? Well, I think they're the worst things in the world. Well, I bet Ted doesn't eat them. I'm sure he does. I bet he doesn't. They're beneath his dignity. He's smart, too, and knows about all sorts of things. Gangsters and burglars and everything. How does he know? Well, he reads about them. He says gangsters are not nearly so frightening as you think. Some of them are quite ordinary looking. <clears throat> After all, if gangsters look like gangsters, I mean, the police would soon get after them, wouldn't they, I mean? Why, good evening, Mrs. Verloc. Hello. Uh, do I know you? I am a business associate of your husband's. Uh, uh, hello. How nice of you to call. And you must be Stevie. That's right. 
What's in the package? It's a surprise for you, Stevie. Oh, boy, a pair of birds. I just love them. Oh, which one's the hen? Well, you have to wait until one of them lays an egg. Wouldn't it fool everybody if one day the jet laid an egg? Gosh, wouldn't that be funny? Isn't that kind? What do you say, Stevie? Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Now, go, go show them around with your sister so that the uh, professor and I can, can have a drink. At the bottom of the birdcage, which I just presented to Stevie, is a trap drawer. Inside that drawer is a package already wrapped as a parcel. I've made it up to look like one of your film containers, something you'd be seen with regularly. Stroke of genius on my part, I yes. do think. Yes, very clever. So, I take this uh, film container to Piccadilly Circus tomorrow afternoon. The mechanism is set and ready to go at 3 p.m. Make us all proud. And keep an eye on that greengrocer next door. You mean Ted? I do. The greengrocer is a cover for Detective Sergeant Ted Spencer of Scotland Yard. What? Excuse me. I was just leaving. Good evening. Let's myself up. That was kind of you to give Stevie the birds. He just loves them. I, I was hoping that would be the case. You're terribly good to him. And I am not to you? If you're good to him, you're good to me. You know that. Yes. I know. Uh, now, uh, listen here. At, uh, at Simpsons, when you had lunch with Ted, do you... Uh, do you remember what he said to you? Did he ask you any questions about yourself or about me? None that I can think of. Why? I think he may be a detective from Scotland Yard. That's why. What? Our Ted? Don't make me laugh. Mm, laugh if you like, but I'm taking this matter seriously. I'm going to have a word with him right now. Well, I've just stopped by and he's off this afternoon. He's got eyes for you. I've seen it. Well, now we know why. It's... Information he's after. Well, then I shall have a word with him myself. Mm. Very well. Uh, now, listen, my dear, what are you doing tomorrow afternoon? Uh, what did you have in mind? A, a package. Films. Films. I, I need them delivered. Oh, just tell me where. Fine. I'll write it all out. Oh, I'd forgotten. Renee's out in the country this weekend for her brother's wedding. You know how busy we are on Saturday matinees. Oh, perhaps Stevie can make your delivery. Hmm. Uh, well, if, if you think so. Oh, he'll be happy to. I'll work it all out. As for right now, I think a long bath and early to bed for yours truly. It's a big day tomorrow. It certainly is. The next morning, Ted meets Winnie in the Bijou lobby. Oh, forgive me for busting in like this. We're getting used to it, Ted, and I'm afraid we've nothing showing at this early hour. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Verloc, but I'm here on business. Yes, the business of spying on our family. Mrs. Verloc, there's nothing personal in all this. Isn't there? You had us fooled all right, making Stevie and me think you were our friend. Do you think I enjoyed it? Listen, I asked to be taken off this job this morning. You can guess why, but it's not as simple as that. In my job, you have to do as you're told. Well, what is it you've been told? If it's about that man who came here last night, he came here on business, about the cinema. That's just it. You have no idea what business they discussed. Oh, well, whatever it was, I'm sure my husband has done nothing wrong. I hope you're right. Well, why do you say it like that? Because we believe there's something going on here connected with sabotage. That blackout the other night, do you remember? Well, my husband hasn't anything to do with sabotage. He told me that night he'd been in all evening. That was not true. I saw him come back in with my own eyes. I don't believe it. You are making things very difficult for me. I'm afraid I've got to ask you a lot of difficult questions. Oh, I've told you before, he's the most harmless man in the whole world. Stevie, has that two-year-old gone over to the Canterbury yet? Oh, there's plenty of time. I was just wondering. Maybe, maybe you could take it along now. There is another little job I want doing at the same time. 
one of the projector lenses needs repair, and the repairman can't come right over here and fetch it, so he suggested that you leave it in the Piccadilly Circus station, and he'll pick it up there at 2.30. Got it. Well, I know the place. The Piccadilly Circus station. Very well. The time is the important thing. It must be there by 2.30. So, you'd better get along now. Well, there's no hurry. Well, you have to walk all the way. Walk? What for? Well, you know you can't take film things in public vehicles. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Now, you needn't tell your sister that you are going as far as Piccadilly. You know how she is always thinking you are going to get run over. Well, she huh? needn't worry. Yeah. Uh, now, hurry up. You might be late. Don't forget, it's got to be there by 2.30 at the latest. Uh, here, take my watch. I've set it ahead by five minutes, so you won't be late. I'm going, I'm going. That's a good boy. Hello, Stevie. What have you got there? Well, I'm taking a two-reel over to the Canterbury. Bartholomew the Strangler. Well, that sounds a juicy one. Have you seen it before? <laughs> Fourteen times. Must be quite a wrench parting from it. Have you learned all of Bartholomew's tricks by now? I'm still practicing the fine points. <laughs> well, on your way, Bartholomew. So long. Careful of your crossing, Stevie. Well, I can look after myself, can't I? Uh, Stevie, is Mr. Verloc in? Oh, uh, yeah, I just left him. Goodbye, Stevie. So long. Now, if you don't mind, may I see your husband? Oh, right this way. So you see, Mr. Verloc, I couldn't afford to let you in on this. Now I've put my cards on the table. I've come here to ask for your help, nothing more. I see. About that man who was here last night. I've been instructed to get a little information about him. We'd be very grateful if you'd help us. Uh, 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 any help I can give, of course. And I have some questions for you as well, Mr. Verloc. When did you first come to this country? Perhaps it would be uh, better if you put it down on paper. Uh, just a formality. At 2.15, on his way to Piccadilly Circus, Stevie found himself uh, distracted by a street salesman. There's always someone on the street ready to steal your time and money. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I want to ask you a question. What is it causes teeth to fall out? My wife's My wife's eggs on toast. Toast. Some of his wife, please, get <laughs> Decay is inevitable in all human organisms. But what if I was to tell you that decay can be instantaneously arrested? Oh, so I have here in my hand a tube of a most remarkable preparation, Salvador. Oh. A sixpence for the small tube and a shilling for the large tube containing four times as much. Now, let me give you a little demonstration. Well, I see a young gentleman who I'm sure would be happy to assist me. Uh, who, me? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. Come on, oh. right up here, young oh, man. Right up here in the chair. There you are. But uh, I have to... Mm, all right, stay where you are. Don't get excited. <laughs> I want you to observe, ladies and gentlemen, that the young gentleman's teeth are very dirty. <laughs> no, they are not. Uh, yes, they are. Now, come on, open your mouth. Come on, that's a good boy. Oh. There you are. All right. Oh. A salvador performs the functions that nature forgot. Oh. It cleanses the teeth, refreshes the mouth, and removes all traces of halitosis. A halit what? Uh, that's bad breath to you, sir. Oh, bad shame to you, sir. Thank you, I don't need it. Okay, bugger. Okay, yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll observe that I have on. Fortunately, disarranged the young gentleman's hair. But that is easily attended to with this bottle of Lawswell. You put it on the hair like that, you see, but it is guaranteed to give the appearance of patent leather. You are now groomed for stardom, as I say. Go on. Buzz off, you little basket. Go on, what do you want? Go on, hop it. The time is the important thing. It must be there by 2.30. Oh, and where are you running to, young man? Oh, I have to make it to that bus across the square, officer. Nobody's crossing this square, not right now. Uh, why? What's going on? Well, don't you see how everybody's lined the street so nicely? It's a parade, son. Oh, boy, a parade! Oh. Wait a minute, I don't have time for a parade! Oh. 
Over two fifty bus to Piccadilly is right on time. Careful of your crossing, Stevie. Tickets, please. Hey, uh, do you think we'll get to Piccadilly Circus Station by two thirty? Yeah, two thirty in the morning. It's already ten of three. Now hold it, big boy. You can't bring those on a public vehicle. They're films, ain't they? Yeah. Then they're flammable. Go on, hop off. Well, you know, you can't take film pins in public vehicles. But I've got to get to Piccadilly. I've got Bartholomew the Strangler. Oh, well, as it's you, Bartholomew, old fella. Well, you can stay as long as you promise not to set about me or the passengers. Thank they... you. Oh, excuse me, what time do we arrive at Piccadilly? Uh, three o'clock, ma'am. Not more than a few minutes. Tickets, please. Uh, hello, young fella. Thank you. What a cute dog. What's his name? Alfred. Oh, I've come here, Alfred. Oh, he likes you. I oh, can tell. that's a good boy. Do you have the time? Here, take my phone. Uh, certainly, it's two forty. Thank you, son. I beg your pardon, but your wristwatch must have stopped. The time is the important thing. I can't be late. Well, perhaps it needs winding. Huh. I have five past three, and this pocket watch has never failed me. It must be there by 2.30. are <laughs> both wrong. I set my clock to the second each and every day. Why, my very job depends on it. And by my time, it will be three o'clock exactly in ten seconds. Nine, eight, tickets, please. Six, Piccadilly is next. Three, two, one. I hope that satisfied you, that I'm no threat. How about that drink now? Oh, no, thanks. However, if you'll let me use your telephone... By all means. Yes? Uh, put me through to Superintendent Talbot, please. Spencer here, sir. What? A whole busload. No survivors. A whole busload of people have been blown up in the West End. How awful! I have to go. Spencer, I'm glad you're here. I had no idea to the extent of the damage, sir. Oh, I've seen many things in my day, Spencer. But this is one of the most devastating. Sir, have you caught on to any clues? A few curiosities have been laid out on this table here. What's this say? Uh, Bartholomew something. Bartholomew the Strangler. That's a film tin, isn't it? It is. I thought you said that Verloc hadn't been out since morning. He hadn't. Well, you'd best go back there and see if that's one of their films. I'm off to meet Hollingshead at that bird shop. Oh, Manny! Uh, two, please. Uh, now, Renee, are you certain you haven't seen Stevie all afternoon? Oh, I'm sorry, I have it. Uh, how many tickets, please? One, please. Right, he can take care of himself. You've got nothing to worry about. How many? Do, please. Late extra news! Big five sensation! Big five sensation! Oh, give me a sixpence, Renee. Late extra news! Big five sensation! Boy, I'll take one. Here you go, ma'am. Late extra news! Big five sensation! Explosion among remains. Film tin. For... Bartholomew the Strangler. <laughs> Mrs. B! Oh dear, help her up, will you? Here you go, ma'am. Up you are. I, I want 
up, Mr. Verloc. I want to see Mr. Verloc. I didn't mean any harm to come to the boy, Winnie. I, I know how you feel, but you have to pull yourself together. Do you think I fixed it so that he'd be killed? No. But I'll tell you who did. Your Scotland Yard friend from next door, Ted. Blame him. I'd have carried the thing myself, but he, he was always hanging around, watching, spying. I, I couldn't get away. Would you rather have lost me? Where are you going? Don't touch me. I, uh, I thought perhaps you'd like something to eat. Look at the mess you've made. I'll clean it up. No, I will. I started chopping the salad. No, I'll you... do that. Hand me the knife. There. That's better. Listen, it's done now. What's done can't be undone. Just go to bed after supper. There is the future. We've got to think of tomorrow. You'll need all your wits about you if they get on to me. Perhaps, uh, I don't know, if, if we had a kid of our own, maybe... It... Winnie, Winnie, I'm sorry for so much. Uh, a world going under, a world going, going up in, in smoke. I... And Stevie, poor, poor Stevie. St Winnie, I'm sorry! Stevie, poor Stevie. Winnie. Poor Stevie. Winnie, what are you doing? Poor Stevie. Winnie, listen to me. Poor Winnie, Stevie. Calm, calm down. Winnie, just put, put the knife <laughs> down. <laughs> 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 You've heard? Yes. I'm terribly sorry. I don't know what to say to you. You know why I'm here? Yes. Mrs. Verloc, I have to arrest your husband. Yes. I'll help him out if I can. Of course, it's, it's for your sake, not for his. I'd do anything for you. You know that, don't you? It's very good of you, Ted, but there isn't anything you can do for either of us. Things aren't as bad as that. The evidence is against him, I'll admit. But nothing's going to happen to you. I know this isn't a very good time to tell you. I, I shouldn't tell you at all, I suppose. But before I take him along, I want you to know that what happens to you means a whole lot to me. I didn't want to tell you how I felt about you, but there it is, I suppose. Uh, I, I guess, I guess I'd better get my coat if we're going. I, I just, I can't stop shivering. It's just inside. Oh, for God's sakes, what happened in here? He was responsible. I'm responsible. It, it's all over and done with. Now, now we should go. There. There's my coat. All right, I'm, I'm warmer now. Um, let's go. Go where? Well, to the police station, of course. No, hold on, wait a minute. Listen to me, you can't go through this. You're not guilty. I, I know it was an accident. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was an accident. Anyway, you only did the hangman's job for him. I know the facts, but no one else does. What chance would you stand against a judge and jury? It doesn't matter. You're telling me you've nothing to live for? Is that it? Look at me. Put your arms around me. <gasps> Ted? We're 
going to get through all this, I swear. It's no good. I don't see how. Will anyone try and get in that room? Uh, Mrs. Jones, at eight in the morning. And you say we've no chance. We've got 12 hours before anyone will find him. Detective Spencer! Oh, what now? Oh, hello, Detective Hollingshead. Inspector Talbot is coming from the yard. That man from the bug shop, the professor, is on his way here in a taxi. We're to arrest him and Belloc on arrival. Oh, good work. Uh, go see the woman in the box office. Her name is Renee. She'll show you in. Are you coming, Ted? In a minute. Oh, there's the bird man in his taxi now. Well, then you'd better hurry, hadn't you? And Talbot right behind him. I'll be there in a minute. Right or Ted. <laughs> Now's our chance. You must look as though you've been crying. Come along. As Ted attempts to lead Winnie to the underground station, Hollingshead follows the professor through the cinema and to the door of the Verloc home. Mr. Verloc? Mr. Verloc? It's the professor. Congratulations on your folks this afternoon. Mr. Verloc, you've made me and many others quite proud. Mr. Verloc, are you home? Put your hands where I can see them! Oh dear, Scotland Yard. You may see my hands, see some, and you see what I'm holding in this one. Once I let go of this button, I'm warning you, my friend, you'd better be far away. Dear God, I've got to get the audience out of the cinema! Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, may I have your attention? I'm Special Agent Hollingshead from Scotland Yard, and I must ask your cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, I must ask you all to leave. No need to get alarmed. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I beg your attention. This is a most serious situation, and we must evacuate immediately. There is great danger here. There is a bomb in this theater, and this bomb is set to explode in less than two minutes. There is no cause for alarm. But we must evacuate this cinema as quickly and orderly as possible. Talbot? I've no time now, madam. Ted was just taking me to the police station. I told him I want to make a statement. Oh, well, I see. It has a statement to do with your husband. That's right. Mrs. Verloc, is your husband inside that cinema? But she knows nothing, sir. Yes, he's inside. Inspector Talbot, the old man got the bomb. Says he's going to use it. Mr. Verloc? Uh, the other man, the professor. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Verloc, what's your husband's nerve like? Can he control this other man? No. <laughs> he can't? Well, he, he can't control anyone. He's dead. <laughs> Most of the audience had been cleared, thank goodness, but... Verloc, you know I saw some things in the wall, but... Is there enough left to identify? I wouldn't say so, sir. <laughs> Spencer, you better look after Mrs. Verloc. Her husband's dead. Blown to glory. You can break it to her. There will be a few inquiries later, but there's nothing against her so far as I can gather. Yes, sir. I'm going to see her to the train station tonight, sir. Yes, you do that. And thank her for all of her help. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. Well, that's queer. Is that girl psychic? Well, she said that Verloc was dead. But did she say it before? Or was it after? I can't remember. Oh, Mrs. Verloc! Mrs. Verloc! 
Where we look at them scurrying away. Now that's what I call a lady vanishing. Undoubtedly never to be seen again in these parts, I suppose. And now, if you don't mind, I shall stage a disappearance of my own, but don't be alarmed. I see it's time for our intermission. You may leave your seats if you wish, have some light refreshment, chat with your friends. But when I return in 15 minutes' time, it will be to tell you the third of our jolly little trio of fairy stories for grown-up children. <laughs>